Good everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we want to study thermodynamics and we'll be looking at an aspect which is talking about the second law of thermodynamics. Now the second law has two statements and the statements are from Kelvin Planck statement and the Clausius statement. Now before we go into details about this statement, we need to understand some terminologies that we will be experiencing along the course of what my explanation. Now the first we need to understand is a reservoir. What is a reservoir? We say a reservoir is any large body through which energy can be withdrawn from or supplied to at constant temperature. What is the energy? We are talking about heat, right? So the next thing will be heat engine. Now, a heat engine is a device that operates in a thermodynamic circle and it does a certain amount of net positive work as a result of what heat transfer from high temperature body to a low temperature body. So as it moves from a high temperature body, which is the high reservoir, which is, the, is also called the source, to the low temperature body, which is, is um, the sink, what happened? A network is done to the surrounding. Work is done. We're talking about, let's talk about your car now. Right? So, there are a lot of ways we can apply this, but we'll move forward. As we move forward, we we'll get to understand better. So, let's see this. A good example of heat engine is a steam power plant. Right? So, let's move forward. And see, the next thing we're talking about will be a refrigerator and also a heat pump so a refrigerator is a device that operates in a thermodynamic circle that helps to draw have to remove temp heat from a region and maintain that region at a temperature lower than that of its surrounding so that is what a fridge does so device that done it that does that is called a refrigerator now so that's the refrigerator for you it makes it the temperature lower than that of its surrounding right so we call it a reverse heat engine it's also a device but it works in the reverse way at which the heat engine works now, the second one is called a heat pump. Now, the heat pump is a device, also a reverse heat engine, that is used to add heat to a region and maintain that region at a temperature higher than that of the surrounding. So that is a heat pump. Now, we use heat pump not in this area, we use it in the climate, in climate zone, that like, let's say, Places like Antarctica, places like London, and so on and so forth. So they work in the reverse way that our appliances, our devices here work. Like now in our in this part of the world, the tropical uh, region, you, uh, you you get to understand that the temperature there are very high, so they need cold, as in cool air, cool conditioned air to in the surrounding right so when they use their ac the ac tends to blow in cold while expel out it in the external region but in the area like in europe most part of europe whereby their their climate is sometimes very unfavor unfavorable very cold now what they need is heat so in that case they use a heat pump to what to generate heat and so on and so forth. So we we'll talk about heat pump. Now we we'll move further. Now if you look at this now, we have two statements. So as the statement we we'll call them the statement of what? The second law of thermodynamics. And which are the Kelvin Planck statement and the Clausius statement. So these are the two statements. We have the Kelvin Planck statement. 
and the Clash Statement. We will look at what Kelvin Planck Statement is all about. Kelvin Planck Statement. Kelvin Planck Statement. The statement states that the statement states that it is impossible to construct a device that operates in a cycle and extract heat from a single reservoir and perform an equivalent amount of work on the surrounding. Now what is telling us is that for a device to work effectively, right? Energy in form of heat must move from high temperature body which is the source to a low temperature body which is the sink that is high reservoir uh, reservoir at high temperature and reservoir at low temperature for work to be done on the surrounding that is not possible for it to only have one source and you expect it to do equivalent amount of work on the surrounding now let's move forward so this is what we have now it means that let's take that i have this to represent my reservoir reservoir at high temperature i use th is that again then if there's any device we have a device here which is what the heat engine and also I have um, a reservoir at low temperature the reservoir at low temperature I'm using TL TL is just an abbreviation for low temperature. So it says if this high temperature body transfer heat that is high to the heat engine, the heat engine process it right as a work output and the heat also will move from the some of the heat will be transferred to the reservoir at low temperature. So this is what Kevin Black is telling us that it is only when temperature travels from high temperature body, which is reservoir at high temperature, to low temperature body, that there will be a network output. Right? So an anonym for reservoir at high temperature is called the source. Why for the low temperature is called the sink. Is that okay? Now, there's not a, something you need to understand here. In in Kelvin Planck statement or in thermodynamics, we say that my TH right is equals to what high temperature, right? My TL. Is given as what low temperature my QH is high heat or heat at high temperature then my QL is heat at low temperature heat at low temperature then my w o u t given as what well, w o given as what work output work output now and the e here that is a circle here represents what my heat engine Now we move forward. Now we're talking about the thermal efficiency. The thermal efficiency is a criterion of performance which determines how much of the heat input to a system 
is converted to what the network output don't forget is a cycle right now because we know when the high temperature body produces or gives out heat at high temperature to the heat engine it is not all the temperature that is entered the heat engine that will be processed into a work output there are some that will be rejected to the sink which is the reservoir at low temperature and there's some that will be used at work right because it's not all the food that you eat as a human being that you use to work some of them comes out as what your excretes and some of them come out as what your feces right why some is being transmitted into the bloodstream that you used to do your normal work so it's analogous to what's happening in the heat engine now what is the thermal efficiency we said it is the ratio of what the network output to the heat input that's our thermal efficiency right so we move forward now from here we use the symbol this to represent our thermal efficiency and we say the ratio of what the net work output all over what the heat input is that again so i'll just draw this for you to get to understand what i'm trying to display here if i have this this way and i have this also and i have this also now this is whenever i write my source you should know it is the reservoir at high temperature and if I write my sink, you should know it's a reservoir at low temperature. And this is my easy heat engine. And there's a work output here. So the source usually brings out temperature heat at high temperature. We use the QH. And the, the heat engine rejects some of them, which is at low temperature, the QL. Right? So this is what we have here. Sometimes we we'll now say that the ratio of the total work output over what the heat input into the reservoir. So we we'll now say that my efficiency here will be giving me what is my work output. We we'll use a negative W net. Why is it negative? In our previous video. We understand that when work is done on the surrounding it attracts a negative sign so the work output is negative work input is positive right now the heat inputs when there's an heat input is coming to the system is positive so we say we have my what my qh as the heat input this is the heat input coming in so the work output is fine that is going out because when you are leaving a room you are reducing your numbers are minus but when you are coming into the room there's an addition so it is coming positive the work is leaving negative now this is what we have but recall according to our first law of thermodynamics which says that the summation the summation of what all the heat inputs into the system plus the summation of all the work that is the work output done by the system and surrounding is equal to what zero now my summation of what the total heat will now give me negative summation of what the work the summation of the work means the network right so it means my network is this so that means I can rewrite this by saying my efficiency NT will give me instead of writing this I can write it to be the summation of what this all over what q 
new age because we say that we see this we put this so that what this is you can write this or you can say submission of what e d w any of the two then you put or like this right there's a negative there now we move forward now submission means addition so what is addition q h plus q l so i'm going to say that my efficiency will give me summation means addition we have the q h plus what the q l all over what q h right now we'll move forward but what do you notice heat is escaping is leaving the system when something is leaving means it's attracting a negative sign when something is entering means an addition sign so since the ql is leaving that means there will be a negative here so i'll say that ql is rejected therefore it will be negative right so if i now want to put that i'm going to say my efficiency will give me qh minus what ql all over what qh so we know in mathematics when you have a plus b over what over c to give me a over c plus b over c similarly my efficiency here will give me they have the common denominator so qh all over what qh minus what ql all over what qh right so this will give me um efficiency will now give me this will cancel this remain one minus what ql all over what qh so this is what on my thermal efficiency so you can use this or you can just use this you can use this any of the two determine on parameter that is what that is given so this means that when you have negative it means that machine has an efficiency of one no machine has an efficiency of what 100 percent so they can uh, no machine has an efficiency of what 100 percent so let's move forward and take some examples on this now look at this example it says a heat engine rejects 600 kilojoule of heat energy as it does 400 kilojoule of work what is the thermal efficiency of the heat engine like i told you earlier when you talk about thermal efficiency it is a criterion that is determine how much of heat that is being supplied to the system is used as work and which of them is rejected right so first of all when you hear the word heat engine you know we're talking about kelvin planck statement right so without being told you just draw out the diagram that supports kelvin planck statement so we have the reservoir reservoir at high temperature that brings out heat at high temperature into the heat engine right that does work to the surrounding to call it the work output right and also the engine use some of the heat that is brought in through that is brought in from the reservoir at high temperature and it rejects some of them at low temperature after it has used some of them also so bring them into the reservoir at low temperature that is tl right now this is what we have that is telling us about kelvin plaque now he says the heat engine rejects 600 kilojoule of heat right so this is the heat engine and it rejects so we're talking about engine that rejects that's been rejected from the heat engine 
is at low temperature and that is 600 kilojoule right of heat as it does work the work output is what 400 kilojoule right so as it's rejecting it's also doing work what is the thermal efficiency and we recover that discover that this is not what given so my ql is given since it's been rejected the ql the ql is given to be what is rejected that will be minus what 600 kilojoule because it is what rejecting and the qh it is unknown but we know that the work output which is the network output is given as what either you write your network output as saying uh, w net right or you say the summation of what the w and that will give us what minus what minus 400 because it is rejected kilojoule is that the case now this is what we have and we are told to calculate for the efficiency this is the data given the data given and we are told to calculate for what the efficiency now for efficiency calculating for the efficiency calculating for the thermal efficiency we should know that recall recall my thermal efficiency is equal to what the net work done all over what the heat input or the heat input right so that is what my q h because this is the heat input here coming in so the heat input as my q h now if i put my formula i don't know what my q h is because it is not given so what i have to do and calculate for q h so that i can easily put it here so i will call this my equation one so i'm moving forward so I'm moving forward here I'm going to put this here and say that recall from the first law we say that uh, the summation of the heat supplied into the system plus the summation of the work done by the system on the surrounding is equal to what? Zero. Now if I take this man here, I'll have my summation of this equals to negative summation of what of this right now summation means addition so to be from here just like I told you earlier QH plus QL so I have my QH plus what plus QL equals to what minus summation of this right so what i'll do is what is my qh my qh is given is unknown plus what is my ql my ql is what uh minus 600 minus 600 equals to negative now my edw is what that is summation of the w of the network that is minus 400 so i'll come here is a negative here already open bracket i'll put what minus 400 right so from here my qh minus 600 will give me 400 because minus times minus is plus so we say that my qh will give me 400 plus what 600 so my qh will give me 1000 kilojoule that's my qh is that the case so from here 
you put QH in equation you put QH in equation 1 above so put QH equals to what 1000 in equation what 1 above right so what's my equation 1 my equation 1 is telling me the efficiency time efficiency is equal to what this over this right so I'll write that out so it's telling me that my time efficiency is equal to what the summation of what the this minus qh right so from here you can move forward what is there's a negative there already right so what is summation of the w summation of the w is giving us what minus 400 i'm going to place it here in brackets i have minus 400 all over qh is what 1000 so this will now give me 400 over what 1000 right and that will give me 0 0.4 and if i multiply by 100 i'm going to be having 40 percent so my efficiency time my efficiency given is what 40 percent that is for that question so what i mean here is that what the time efficiency of this engine here is what 40 percent so that means the reservoir high temperature produce uh, rejects a heat of produce a heat of what qh of 1000 kilojoule into the heat engine and the heat engine converts from that 1000 it uses 400 and rejects 600 so the heat rejected from the 1000 that is supply to the heat engine is what 600 and the efficiency of this system here is 40 percent now let's take another example now the example two it says that a heat engine develops 10 kilowatts from a heat source supplying at the rate of 900 kilojoule per minute if the sink temperature is 200 degrees Celsius, determine the temperature of the heat source. Now, what you do? Solution. The solution here is that if I have this, if I have this this way, we say that, first of all, draw your heat engine since you had it is heat engine just draw this out first then we bring out this which is E I bring out the next guy here what is this right and it is this guy here W out now we said the heat engine developed 10 kilowatts of heat. So this heat engine developed what? 10 kilowatts of heat. It's developing 10 kilowatts of heat. Is that the key? Power from a heat source. This is the heat source. Right? Let's call this the heat source is our reservoir. Reservoir at high temperature so heat source supplying at the rate of what 900 so this guy is rejecting what is called qh is supplying qh and qh given as what 900 kilojoule per what per minute and i said if the sink temperature the sink is the reservoir at low temperature the reservoir at what low temperature is 200 and that is equal to what 200 degrees celsius is 200 determine the temperature we're looking for this so the parameter here the data given is this the data given is this we have our qh to be equal to what 900 kilojoule per minute then um, our QL we don't know 
the heat generated by the heat engine we don't know so that's our QL then the work output WOUT is equal to what 10 kilowatts then the temperature at the sink which is the load temperature is what 200 degrees Celsius so these are the parameters given so what you should do here right we will going to make all the units uniform the heat here is 900 kJ per minute right and the work here is what 10 kilowatts so make the make this to be what in kilowatts so what I'll do is if I divide 900 by 60 seconds 900 kJ right let me just do it here if I have 900 kJ per minute it is same thing by having 900 kJ all over 60 seconds because one minute is 60 seconds and this will now give me this will now give me 900 divided by this will give you 15 kJ per word per second because 900 divided by 60 is 15 we send it by writing 15 kJ per second now we know very well that but Joule per second is equal to what? What? That will now make us say that my 15 kilojoule per second is saying 15 kilowatts. So that means this man here is 15 kilowatts. And 200 degrees centigrade converted to what? Into Kelvin. I will be having what? 473 Kelvin. Because Converting to Kelvin, you must always add by with 273. Now we start applying. We know very well that um, we need to know QL. And to know QL, you put that recall. Recall um, the summation of the heat input or the energy input plus the summation of the work done is equal to what? Zero. Now, my summation of this is equal to minus the summation of this. Now, summation means addition of all the heat in the system. And that is QH plus QL, which is equal to minus summation of what the are we good now from here we know that my qh is giving us 15 kilowatts and my ql is giving us unknown my ql is giving us what unknown so well, because the QL is rejected, that's why I'm having negative QL because it's leaving. So that's why it turns to what? Negative. Equals to minus bracket. Summation of the W is in the same I work out. And that is 10. And it's going out, so it's negative what? Negative 10. Because it's leaving the system. Look at the arrow here. So this will give me minus QL. And you've seen it's coming here. It will come minus. So minus times minus is what? Minus times minus is plus, so we're left with 10. So when the 15 is coming here, we become minus what? 15. So my negative QL will now give me minus what? 5. Because 10 minus 15 is 5. This minus will equate this minus. And we're going to be left with what? QL to be equal to what? 5 kilowatts. Right? We've got our QL. The QL here is 5 kilowatts. Right? That we've got now. Now the next thing we want to calculate is the temperature at the high reservoir. So for temperature at high at high reservoir, calculating calculating for temperature at the source. Temperature at the source. Hmm? We see that there's a relationship that says that 
the QH over what? QL is equals to what? TH over what? TL. Now, what is my QH? My QH is 15 kilowatts. 15 kilowatts all over my QL is 5. Right? Equals to my TH, we don't know. My TL is given as what? 473. We've gotten all the parameters here. This is TL473. This is QH 15 kilowatts. Right? And uh, we're moving forward. Now, if I cross multiply, this is coming here. It will be 15 multiplied by what? 473. All over the what? The 5. Equals to what? TH. So, we we'll now say that my TH will now give me um my TH will give me one thousand four one nine one thousand four one nine kilowatts. So the temperature at the high reservoir here, the temperature here is what one thousand four one nine Kelvin. So that is what we do in order to calculate for our high temperature. So what it means here is that the temperature of 1419 Kelvin produces a heat which is running at 900 kilojoule per minute, which is what? 15 kilowatts. Produces a heat of what? 15 kilowatts, which is the energy, into the heat engine that use part of it as the work on the surrounding which is 10 kilowatt the remaining is what 5 kilowatt to the reservoir so making the, this 5 kilowatt energy supply to the reservoir increase the energy of the reservoir to what 200 kilo 200 celsius which is the same as saying 473 kelvin so that is for that question so the next question now the next one is telling us a reversible heat engine operates between hot and cold reservoir. Now it's telling us reversible, but let's continue reading and see what will happen. The heat transferred from the hot reservoir to so since the heat is being transferred from the hot reservoir, right? It means it is not a reversible heat engine. It is what an heat engine. Once there's a heat that is moved from the hot reservoir, which is the source, to the heat engine, you say it is what? It is a heat engine, it's not a reversible heat engine. So this is just said here to what? To confuse you. Now, first of all, you're going to draw this this way. Draw this this way. And this is the source. The source is also called reservoir at high temperature. Is coming down here, bringing the heat engine, and we'll have the other one here. Now, if you notice, I've not yet put my direction here, right? So, what it means is that it says the reservoir heat engine operates between hot cold reservoir. The heat engine, this heat engine, right? The heat engine transfer the heat transfer from the hot reservoir. To the engine, this is the hot reservoir. To the engine, the heat transferred is what? QH and it's given as what? 28.2. 28.2 kilojoules. Right? Why the engine rejects this engine, which is E, rejects 14.7 kilojoules. And that is QL. QL equals to what? 14.7 kilojoules of E to the cold reservoir. The reservoir is also called the sink that is the one that is cold the low temperature reservoir is also called the sink now we are not told since temperature heat is moving from high to low then we will to have what is called a work output right so we so to calculate for what the work output and also the efficiency so the data here given our data here given is that my QH is 28.2 kilojoule the QL given as 14.7 kilojoule. Then we have the work output is unknown. I want to calculate the efficiency also, which is what unknown. So let us first of all calculate our work output, right? So from here, 
recall. You want to apply for what? Work output. So recall. We know that the summation of the heat input to a system plus the work done by the system is equal to what? Zero. Which will give us the summation of this equals to what? Negative summation of what? This. Right? When it's coming, it will come negative. Now, this means QH plus what? QL. QH plus QL. That means of addition of all the heat in input equals to now we have my summation of this the w now that's what we're looking for work output something as this right now whenever i say negative it means the work output now qh is what 28.2 28.2 since this is coming out of the heat engine to be negative so this will turn to minus minus what 14.7 equals to what negative summation of what e the w right now if i subtract this i'm going to be having we're having 13.5 this is 13.5 kilojoule and giving us what negative summation of what the w so if this come here my summation of the w will give me minus 13.5 kilojoule the negative here implies that what there's a work done on the surrounding there is a work output right now we've gotten our work output now the next thing we should be trying to get here now should be the efficiency from here we know that for efficiency calculating for efficiency we know that efficiency this is equal to what the net work output over what the heat input and that will give me what my network output it is giving me to be we have negative here, open the bracket. My summation of the W will give me what? Minus 13.5. All over the QH is given to be 28.2. So minus and minus will give you plus. So the long run, 13.5 divided by 28.2 is going to give me uh, 47.9 percent so this will be my answer when you divide this multiply it by 100 and give you 49 point 47.9 percent so that is the efficiency for this question so now we'll now go into the next statement which is called the clausius statement now the clausius statement the second statement of the second law of thermodynamics that states that it is impossible to construct a device that operates in a cycle and produces no other effect other than transfer of heat from a cooler body to a hotter body. So it's telling us that we know that everything in terms of a uh, heat engine, the action there is spontaneous. We know temperature will always move from a hotter body to a cooler body. But now we are not revising the case that heat is transferring from the sink to the source. From the sink to the source. So he said whatever can do that will be a reverse heat engine. And that reverse heat engine will need an heat input, a work input from the surrounding. Right? So when you hear the word clash statement, you will draw this. We have what is called um,
the source which I said is the reservoir at high temperature let me just try the source there which is the reservoir at high temperature then I have the engine but in this case the engine will be going backward to show you the reverse heat engine and we have what is called uh, the sink so this is the sink here but what do you notice everything is going backward my QL will go backward my QH will go backward then what happened the work also we go backward so we'll now call it WN so this is our reverse heat engine and that is our process it says that for heat to move from here to here there must be a work input is that okay so in terms of clashes violator means when you are drawing this there because sometimes they might tell you to draw the clashes violator it means that you are not going to put the heat input the work input you only just draw the remaining diagram but you will not draw this one so this is the class of violator without this, this is the class of violator here. Now we move forward. Now there's something we need to understand here, and that is called the COP. Because in times of class of statements, there's two um, consequences of the class of statements. And one of the consequences is what we we'll call the refrigerator, while the other one is called what? The heat pump. At the beginning of the lecture, I've already defined what is the refrigerator and what is the heat pump, right? So we'll go into what is called COP. Now, the COP, we call it the coefficient of what performance, and um, that is the the ratio of the desired effect over the work input. Or we call it the ratio of the refrigerating effect all over the work input, right? So the COP also is giving us the COP is giving us the desired effect, desired effect all over what the work input right so now in terms of the COP of a refrigerator now what do you expect what do you desire from a refrigerator cooling and as you have, how do you have cooling so you call it either you call it the cooling effect over what the work input or you call it the refrigerating effect or you say the refrigerating effect any of the two it's correct why that of now what do you notice in cooling we have low heat so we'll call it ql all over what you work in W I N right that would be the C O P of the refrigerator. So in terms of temperature we say that my which is the same thing as saying the temperature the low temperature all over what the net temperature that is T H minus what T L please don't forget that the C O P can be equal to this and can also be equal to what this now in terms of heat pump now in heat pump the cop for heat pump right is um the heating effect but what do you desire from heat from from heat pump is heat so it's giving us the heating effect the heating effect all over what the work input so and for you to have heat it heat must be what temperature of the heat must be high all over the work inputs so that is the cop for what heat pump but if in terms of temperature to be what th all over th minus what tl 
So these are the formulas that we need. Now let's take an example. Two one fifteen. I see a pair of refrigerator. G O P of refrigerator will give me the refrigerator will have the cooling effect. The cooling effect, right? All over what? The work input. Because refrigerator brings about cooling effect. That is our desired effect. And that will give me what is the cooling effect is at low temperature. So my QL is that will give me QL all over QL all over what? WN. Now what is my QL? My QL is two one five. My WN is eighty five. So this will now give me that. The C O P of R will give me two one five over eighty five will be um two point five three. Two point five three there's no unit for it. Now the next thing is for heat pump. Because if you look at the next one looking for a COP for heat pump. So the COP for heat pump, COP for heat pump. Now we're looking for what? This is I I and this is I. For heat pump, we're looking for heat. So we'll call it the heating effect. The heating effect all over what the work input now what is our eating effect here is at high temperature that will be qh all over what the work input which is 85 right so let me just put the work input w i n so this will now give me um qh is 300 right the QH is what 300. Now, what do you notice in my formula? There's a negative there in the eating effect because it is leaving. What do you notice? It is leaving the system so negative. So, I have a negative there. Now, if I now move, since it's leaving the negative of 300 and the negative that is here, all over what the 85. Now, this will now give me 300 over what? 85. And that will give me um, 2 point, that give me 3.53. 3.53. There is no unit for it. This is how you calculate for COP. And more and more and more to come. So if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.